Thank you, Senator Menendez, for having me this afternoon, and uh, I guess I'll just begin. Beginning with World War II and its succeeding events, the globe began a process of economic interdependency and diplomatic trade. The Marshall Plan, the Japanese Constitution, and the creation of organizations like CETO instituted a global trading system where the United States economically and militarily backed her allied nations while the Soviet Union backed their own. Most unaligned nations did not flourish without the assistance of one superpower or the other. In 1991, the USSR collapsed, creating a power vacuum throughout almost a third of the world. The United States was the only nation that had the resources, initiative, and entrepreneurial spirit to lead a global economy. The unique position of the United States at the end of the Cold War is the same position the United States holds today. The decade which followed the collapse of the Soviet Union led to unprecedented economic expansion for the U.S. This was due to unchallenged economic leadership by the United States in addition to loosening of international trade regulations by President Bill Clinton. With the emergent threat of global terrorism in the first decade of the 21st century, the U.S. has turned towards neoconservative foreign policy where the military is used utilized as a primary tool of international relations. This unilateral aggressive foreign policy under the Bush administration led to widespread mistrust of American leadership abroad. The election of Barack Obama signified a shift towards multilateral cooperation between the U.S. and many nations around the world, but an air of American exceptionalism remains. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton set a foundation for fair international policy and the utilization of smart power, which advocates for solutions based on the context of each diplomatic situation, be it sanctioning, negotiation, or the use of force. This strategy is effective, yet the goal of the United States can be furthered efficiently, covertly, and in parallel with the usage of Clinton-era economic strategies. The United States is the largest, largest gross domestic product in the world, nearing $17 trillion. The combined wealth and significant freedom of American citizens makes the United States the most sought and thus most significant consumer market in the world. Any market which sells goods to American consumers and purchases well-made American goods is a prosperous nation. The Department of State has the ability to both increase the economic prosperity of the United States and increase her reputation from a global perspective.